and welcome to another episode of FUBAR. In today's episode we are going to talk about how to write integration tests in your serverless application. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started! <laughs> This video is sponsored by Thundra. Thundra is a serverless observability platform helping developers debugging, testing and troubleshooting their serverless applications with no code change and zero overhead. You can see their demo environment by clicking the link in the description box. Thank you very much Thundra for sponsoring this video. So this is the third video in the Hunting Serverless Errors playlist and in the first two we talk about testing and unit testing and in this one we are continuing on the testing theme and we are going to go to integration tests. How to write integration tests is something you ask me a lot in a lot of comments so I hope this video is a good introductory video on what you can do and how you should write them. So I will show you how to write the unit test and then how to add them to an existing CI CD platform so you can have them automatically every time you deploy your new system interaction or into staging. So let's go and learn more about integration testing and get started with the code. What is integration testing in serverless applications? The main purpose of this test is to expose faults in the integration between the different parts of our system. In a serverless system we have functions, managed database, managed queues, authentication services and other APIs. We want to make sure that all of those relationships are working and they are properly configured. For example, if our application has an API gateway endpoint and a DynamoDB table, now it's the time to make sure that our integrations towards this service is working. We need to create tests that prove that the different integrations are working. Also, if we were calling a third-party API, like a weather API, we also need to test the integration now to make sure that these are working too. It's important to have in mind that sometimes we won't be able to perform integration tests against some APIs as when we perform operations to those APIs that will have real consequence. That's why it's important to get a sandbox account for those APIs so we can test against it. For example, if our system is using a payment API, if we use the normal API, we might issue a payment and we don't want to have any consequences in our financial accounting of our company because of testing. That's why we need some kind of sandbox API for the payment system that we can use in our testing. In serverless applications, integration tests are very important. Serverless applications are very distributed by nature and they use a lot of external services. Therefore, we need to make sure that everything works together. That is why we need to have an automated process in place to test our application. As we did with unit tests that every time before deploying to the cloud, the unit tests are run. Now we want to run our integration test after the deployment is completed. And if those tests fail, then we need to roll back our deployment. In this video I will show you how to write integration tests in your project and how to add those to your CD CD pipeline. In a previous video that I will leave in the card I talk about GitLab and how you can create deployment pipelines with it. We are going to use GitLab in this video to run the test. So let's go to the code. We are going to start from where we left in the previous video where we created the unit tests. So we are going to start there and now we are going to create a new folder called integration tests and there we are going to write our tests. We are going to write two types of tests here, one against the Lambda and one against the API. So we want to write one against the handler integration, we want to make sure that the Lambda is working fine and for that we will need to create some utils. So the first thing we want to do is to create an utils folder and there we are going to create some utils files. We are going to create a step files where we are going to write this uh, method called via handler where we are going to just basically call the handler of our application from here and we can uh, use reutilize this method in different handlers so if we are calling the hello or the moi or the get greet we will use the same way to create that so that's kind of useful so basically this is just creating our events, uh, triggers, our context, our callback and everything that the handler needs in order to execute 
and in order to get this working we need to install lodash this is a quite big library but the good thing is that this is not going to our our lambda it's going only to the development dependencies so it should not be a problem so basically this via handler will take an event and a function name so we are going to invoke get hello and our event is the query string parameters we pass the input name with a name and then the uh, function name is hello and that will just put the event and run that function name super straightforward and very simple to reutilize all the code around so we just export that method and then we can call it from our handler integration test so we require these step files in our handler integration test and then we can use it so we want to test with a name that the hello function is working so we will just the step invoke get hello and we will pass a name in there and that will return us a result and there we can check the status code to be 200 the body to be marcia and things like that and if we run these tests we need to uh, we can run it with a script a uh, node script for that we just need to uh, do chest integration test and put that m node and also we We'll modify a little bit the npm run test to just run the unit tests so this is working now now we can write a test against the api gateway for that we need to initialize our project we need to give the url that this api gateway is running we might need to give some name for our dynamo table that we will use later so we just create the initialize full file now because we will need this in a moment we need to pass the URL that uh, API Gateway is um, creating the endpoints and set the AWS region where our application is running. And that's kind of it for initialization. Then we will use this Axial library to do the HTTP request. For that, we will install it in our dependencies, development dependencies, and then we just call the base URL with the uh, hello and then we pass a name and it should get 200 and get the hello world marcia that's really simple so now we can again run our integration test and we can see that we have two and both are passing good so now we can do exactly the same test but without the name and we can see that we get also that this is passing and you can create as complicated test as you want oh it's not passing because i didn't write it properly that's why tests are good for, you know. Our test is really calling that endpoint and checking the result. These tests are a little bit slower because they are calling the internet. And then we can do similar thing with the MOI function that we have written, that the MOI function is basically saving something into Dynamo. And then we need to add that step, exactly the same as hello, but just doing the MOI. And then we just uh, expect the same. And then after, that we need to remove the data from the table and for that we need to create a new utils that is the tear down so we don't leave uh, any kind of um, side effects in our data another way to run the integrations test is just to have a uh, infrastructure for this test that's another way but in this case we are using the infrastructure that is available for us but we're just cleaning up after us so we need to require this tear down. Basically, this is just removing the data from the database. So we add something in the database and then we remove it because we want to be able to run this test multiple times. We don't want to leave the side effects of the tests. And now we want to also uh, do the same, but from the API gateway. In this case, we are calling Axios and it's just doing exactly the same. And then also we want to remove it from the database. It's exactly the same test, but instead of going through the handler, it goes by the API gateway. And then we can do the same test without the name and we can get the same results. Now we are going to do a test in our handler against uh, the was greeted. And here we need to add it through the steps scan. And it's very similar to the previous ones. We just have the function was greeted. And then we can call it in our steps and we will get the grid found if the name doesn't exist and then we will do the same for a name that doesn't exist 
we will get a 404 grid was not found. And now we will test against the API gateway when the grid uh, is not found, so this name doesn't exist in our database. So look at that, we are trying and then we are catching an error because this uh, is returning at 404 and that's raised an error, so it's important to catch your errors and test them as well. So this is how you, you test the errors in the API gateway. So by running this test, we make sure that our Dynamo is working properly and our API gateway is working properly, our handler is working properly and everything is in its place. So we have now the, the unit test and the integration tests. The next thing we are going to do is we are going to add the GitLab configuration. For that, you need to have your project uh, with uh, init uh, git. And you can find all the information on how to do this in this video. I will leave you in the playlist and in the description box on how to set up a GitLab pipeline. I will follow those instructions, but I will not go step by step. But basically you need to create this GitLab CI YAML with all the information for your, uh, for your pipeline. We'll have three stages. The first one is to test, to run the unit test. The second one is to deploy this uh, project into our AWS account and then to run the integration test. So before script, we are uh, going to install the serverless framework and we are going to install this node project in our uh, kind of Docker image that GitLab provides us. Then we are going to test before deploy and for that we are going to run npm test and then we are going to deploy after test and that will just deploy this project into the given uh, region and then we are going to run npm test integration to test our integration tests. So it's very straightforward. I will create the install script and the deploy script as we did in the video where I explain everything by detail and you can check it out there. So now everything is fixed and we can push to GitLab and see how the system deploys and how everything works in our pipeline. So I push everything to GitLab and start automatically the pipeline when the new uh, commit uh, hit GitLab, this starts automatically and we can see the three stages, the test before deploy, deploy after test and in integration test and we can see the first one is running in this Docker machine and this takes a while but it should be running our tests. I speed this up until the next process but we can see that the test has passed, there is four uh, test suites run and 11 tests and they all passed and now we are moving to the next job that is to deploy and it's running already and this is deploying to the cloud and I will also speed this up and then after it's deployed it will run the integration tests and we can see that the tests are running against the, uh, the cloud. You can see that there were 10 tests in two different suites and they all passed. So that's great. We have created an uh, automated deployment pipeline with tests and everything is working. You can do this as complicated as you want. You can create all kind of interesting uh, examples, but this is kind of the base of everything. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. And the next video coming in this series is about debugging live applications on the cloud. So I think that's something you're very curious about because everybody is talking about local testing and you're like, oh, you're not talking about testing locally any applications, how I will survive? And I think a lot uh, can be solved with these debugging live applications in the cloud. Um, that's something you want to know how to do it and how to figure out errors you have in the code. So I hope you are excited about that next episode as much as I am. And if you want to keep on watching around here, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch. So go ahead and click. And if not, I see you in the next episode of Uber. Ciao, ciao.